Hey everyone, welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. My name is Cody Seibert, and in this video, I am going to be trying to build a React image slider. In this video, I'm, I'm recording off my, um, my old desktop machine, which is using Windows. And it's kind of loud, the fans are loud, and my AC unit is running, so you might have some noise in the background. So hopefully that doesn't bother you all. Uh, let me cover this up. All right, so in this video, again, a React image slider. I got a request to build one, so I'm going to try to do it using an API to display some images. So let's just go ahead and dive into it. So to start off, with a React image slider, what we want to do is we want to have an input box, right? So we want to have some type of input that a user can type in, I don't know, like cookies or pizza, and then click a search button and then get a result back of a bunch of images inside of a slider. So let's just start with doing that. Uh, so first off, I'm going to say input. And then I'm also going to do button, and that will be uh, that'll have search inside of it. Let's see, first this page. All right, so we get an input box with the search, and what we want to do is when the user actually types into this input box, we want to keep track of that state. So let me go ahead and just create a state variable using a use state hook. So I will say const query and set query equals use state and that's going to be equal to an empty string by default and what we're going to be doing here make sure you import this is when you type into the input box we want to pretty much set that query state so i'm going to say on change i'm going to call a function that says basically call set query of e dot target dot value and that will basically update this query variable as i type so now if i type in like cookies and I expand this app component down here, we can see that the state of this first hook is cookie. So if I change like letters, notice that it changes. So that's the first step. The second step is when I click the search button, I want to do a request to an API to get back some data. So over here on the second tab, I'm using an API called Pixabay. And once you log in and register or whatever, you can go to their docs and they give you a URL that you can do a get request to. And basically in the query string parameters, um, you know what that is basically, it's like where you do the money sign and then the parameter, you'll see in a second, but you can provide your key, and this is my API key, and you can provide a query, which is Q. So if we go over to the second tab here, notice that I am making the request to that URL they provided us. I'm providing my key, providing a queue of pizza, and we get back an object that has a bunch of different hits. And inside this hit array, or hits array, each object has various images. So in this case, we get a pizza that looks like that. And then over here, we get a pizza that looks like this. So we're going to be using this API to get back some data and then display it. So first thing we want to do is when someone clicks on this button, we probably want to run some type of query. So I'll say on click, and I'm going to call a function that we haven't created yet called uh, run query. And that is going to be a function. So run query is a function up here, defined inside my functional component. And all that's going to do is make a request using the fetch library, or the, the fetch method that's built into your browser to that API. So I'm gonna say fetch, I could pass in that URL, and I'm gonna keep it consistent other than where it says Q equal. This is one of the query string parameters you could change. Instead of pizza, I actually want to provide a string interpolation and pass it query. So now I type in pizza here and click search. It'll do a request. And in fact, we can actually visualize that. If I go to network, where's network? If I go to network and type in pizza, click search. Notice that it makes a request to our backend here and we get back some hits. All right, so we wanna do some post-processing of this data just so that we just get the images. I don't care about all this other stuff. So I'm gonna um, basically chain on some things to this the result of fetch, which happens to be a promise. So if you know anything about promise chaining, you can attach a promise dot then, and then I can say uh, response. And the fetch API is gonna return your response object that has like different methods on it. And one of those methods is JSON. So I'm going to call JSON here, and then that's gonna return us this uh, data that we see over here with the hits and stuff. So then I can promise chain again if I want to, and just grab the hits. And what I want to do is I want to post-process those hits using a map function just to get the uh, web format URL here. So I'm going to say, um, in this promise chain, do hits.map. 
and then I can say web format URL and then do that. This is kind of messy. I'm sure there's a way to use like low dash or underscore to make this cleaner. But now basically what we have is we have all of those images inside of an array now and we can set those somewhere. So let's pretend that we have another use state variable declared. You know, we don't need to, to pretend, let's just do it. So I'm gonna go up here and declare an images state and I set images setter function and then use the use state hook. And I wanna definitely provide it an empty array as my initial value, cause that's what we're gonna be storing, an array of image URLs. So what I could do here is on the final promise chain, I'm just gonna call set images and save that. So now if I go back to my React component thing over here and type in cookies and click search, notice that our state is an array of a bunch of URLs now. Awesome. So that kind of makes our logic over here a little bit easier. So the next step is we want to display some of those images, right? So underneath this thing, this input box and button, in fact, I should probably wrap this in a div just so that it's a little cleaner. But I'm going to basically display the first image that we get back. So I could say make an image element and I want to set the source equal to images of index zero. Now this will crash when we first load the app because we don't have any images. So I'm going to conditionally render this and say if images length is greater than zero, then if I can find the ambersand. Wow, what's going on here? Okay. When we have images, when the length is greater than zero, that's when we display the image. So I can say cookies and I can do a search and we get back some cookies here. All right, let me close this. Y'all don't need to see that. All right, so I think at this point now is a good um, opportunity to kind of split this up into another component. So I'm gonna make an image slider component and I'm gonna go over here and source and say image slider JS. And that's gonna be a React functional component here. And what I'm gonna do is basically take that images logic out and put it inside my image slider here. I think that's how I could do it, let's see. So take it, put in my image slider, and then I want to basically call image slider here. And then I can auto import it, which it should have done up here, auto import. And then I could pretty much pass those images in as a prop. So I'm gonna say pass in images here. And the image slider will be the component responsible for like looping through them and stuff. So at this point it's crashing because we don't actually have those images passed in as props. So I'm gonna pass them in. And now our app should work as it did before. And that puts us in a better position to start using this image slider to actually build out stuff. So an image slider basically is composed of a toggle left, a toggle right, and then an image, okay? So we already have the image but what we want to do is we want to kind of wrap all this in like a div and wrap it in a div. And then we want to have some controls. So we could say like make a div here. You know, I'm going to make a button. I'll say make a button. And we want to have that display the left arrow. So if I do this in React, we could display a left arrow. Sorry, I'm so used to typing with my laptop keyboard. I'm using my DOS keyboard right now. That's why it's really loud and I'm not used to it because it doesn't have any any letters on the keyboard because I thought that was cool, but really it's just a stupid thing to buy. But... All right, so now if I search for cookie, we get a button left and a button right. And we can do some styling with this in a second, but what I want to do at this point is when I click on the right button, we want to basically go through the images in the array um, by incrementing the index by one, okay? So if you know an array basically has a bunch of indices, zero, th one, two, three, four, five, six, or whatever, and we have a current index that we're looking at, which is in the index zero, as you can see here. And as you click the right button, you wanna increment that. So first of all, let's make some state, and I'll say current, I'll just call it index, and set index. And I'm gonna go ahead and call use state, and I'll pass that zero. So our initial index is actually going to be zero. If I save this, it should close out. And one thing that will actually help us speed up development is if I take that request, you know what, if I just do this, let me copy this, copy value to clipboard, let's see if that works. 
So I, just just temporarily, I'm going to just put that entire images URL there. So now when it refreshes, we can just view the image. You know, we probably want to do a couple of those. So let's just do. Bear with me. Let me just grab this one too. All right. So we have two images to play around with. We can come back and comment those out in a second. But when we click that right button, we want to do something. So let's make another function, which is going to be invoked uh, when we click on the right arrow. And I'm going to call it slide right. So on click of the right button, call a method or function called slide right. And we basically need to define that up here as a function. And what do we need to do in this function? Well, like I said, we need to increment the index by one. So if I can just index plus one. Oh, not 10. That's too much. All right, so now when I click it, it goes to the next image. But notice that if I click it again, the app actually breaks. And that is because we're at index two, but the array only has index zero and one. So a, a little fix for that is you could wrap those in parentheses and then mod it. This is modulus. And you can mod it by the length of the images. Okay, so now I can keep clicking this and it's basically going to go to the very end of the array and then loop back to the front. So that covers the slide right. Now the other method, slide left, const slide left, is going to do the opposite. It's going to increment or decrement by one. And then we need to check if we've gone below zero, we go back to images, like the very end index. Okay, so what I could do is I'm going to say const next index is equal to index minus one. And then again, like I said, if the next index is less than zero, we want to do something, which means uh, we want to pretty much set the index equal to images of length minus one. Again, basically the length of the array minus one is going to give you the very last index. Otherwise, just set index to next index. There's probably a way to make this more terse, but hey, that works. Um, I'm going to go ahead and invoke that slide left here. So now if I go back, I can toggle through all my images. So at this point, we have basically all the functionality of the image slider. We can query for images. We can slide through them. OK, so the last thing I'm going to do is just do some styling. I'm actually not going to do any CSS transitions in this tutorial because I need to refresh my memory on it. I was planning on doing it. I've done it before, like a couple days ago, just to prepare for the tutorial. But I've already forgotten how to do it. So I'm just going to style this up and hopefully make it a little bit nicer. So what we could do is inside the main app CSS, let us just uh, text align everything. And maybe that'll make it look nicer. Oh, it is already text align. Cool beans. Um, all right, what I'm going to do instead is for the entire app, I'm going to say display flex and then justify content center. And that should push things to the center, I believe. Where's app? Is app even displayed? I don't think I even displayed it. Let me put um, class name is app. The capital A, it was capital A. So let me put a class name onto this and that should text align everything. And then I just want to do some margin, let's see margin top, 20 pixels, let's see. I guess that's okay. Margin top 20 and then for the image, Margin top 10 pixels. Let's style the buttons up a little bit. And it makes more sense to put these styles in their own CSS. So I'm going to go and make a new image CSS. Image slider CSS. I'm going to paste those in. So I'm going to put the margin on top of the. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. It's not the best styling. But now you can actually toggle through these images. Give it a sexy orange. Oh, so I should probably scope these. So scope them like that. All right, so let me just go back. I, I think I'm just gonna wrap this tutorial up because 
I don't want to get too into the weeds of it, but I did show you how to access an API using the fetch uh, library. I showed you how to make a subcomponent. I showed you how to pass in some images, do some promise chaining, uh, how to make, how to loop through an array, like a circular ar array looping through it using modulus and doing this little if statement thing. You might be disappointed that I didn't do CSS transitions because uh, honestly, they are a little bit difficult. I've done them before. I need to refresh my memory. But if you're interested in seeing CSS transitions with the slider, let me know and I can actually work on that and show you all. Because it does get a little bit complicated knowing like which button you clicked, what classes and transitions you have to do. You have to import something called like a child factory onto this. Uh, but there is a library called React Transitions Groups. If you're interested in doing uh, transitions in React, the docs are not that great, so good luck. Uh, I might make a tutorial, like I said. Okay, sorry to disappoint if you wanted more out of this tutorial, but that is all I'm going to be showing. So thank you so much for watching. And again, like if you have any comments or suggestions, leave, leave them below. Uh, feel free to join my Discord server, which is also pasted in the description. If you wanted to go and send me some suggestions or message me. All right, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.